Good morning, everyone. This is Jamie Palmer of Outlier Marketing Group. I am so excited to be here today and to share with you guys the five essential elements to grow your business in today's climate. Now, I've got some notes here, so if you see me look down, it's just because I'm referencing my notes. So we're in unprecedented times right now, and it can be especially challenging for us entrepreneurs to navigate this like no one has ever been through this before and it's it's hard right so i truly contend that if there is a will in this time there is a way to be successful and to grow your business and to stay in business so let's dive into the content so the first and foremost one is to show up consistently now if you followed me for any period of time you probably have heard me say and talk about the importance of consistency i'm just going to show you and give you some data because i'm a huge fan of having the data to back up the stuff that i'm talking about and early reports from facebook indicate that people are spending 79 percent more time online than they had previously so 79 percent more time on social media than they had been previously that is bananas okay and so what does that mean for you as the business owner i want you to think about how you can consistently show up and deliver value and build trust and foster engagement and create a community and really like engage and be human right because it's that consistency when you're having the consistency on your social media in your community with your email list with all of that sort of stuff that means that you are like an expert, right? You're positioning yourself as an expert who people get to know, like, and trust, and people buy from people they know, like, and trust. And people hate to be sold, but they really love to buy. And so when you can kind of flip the thinking of how you're showing up in the online world to teaching and educating and showing value versus selling, it really changes the dynamic of the relationship out of the gate. So what does showing up consistently mean for you? That means you might be posting on social media daily. That means you might be doing a week weekly Facebook live show. That means you might be looking for opportunities to present and showcase your expertise. You know, for me, one thing that I've done during this crazy time is I have said yes to summits, to teaching a workshop. I've said yes to podcast interviews. And every time that I've said yes to one of those things, it has resulted in a, a selling or sales conversation. It hasn't always resulted in a sale, but it's always resulted in a sales conversation. So what does that mean for you? It means that you really, really, really need to show up and lead for your community during this time. It also means that you might want to spend five or 10 minutes a week participating in groups and answering people's questions. You might want to reach out and just check in on past clients to see how they're doing, right? That might be something that <laughs> is a benefit, right? Just to reestablish that relationship and say, hey, how's it going? Because you never know what might come out of that for you in the future. The next thing that I'm going to encourage you to do is to make offers. Okay. So if you are showing up online or you're emailing your list or you're doing whatever these things are, but yet you are not making offers, you're not going to be able to sell anything. So I want you to think about the ways in which that you could potentially reimagine the offers that you might have. So a couple of things that I want to talk about when it comes to offers. Offers should include a sense of urgency. Like why does somebody need to act now in terms of your product or service? Like what are they going to get by taking action now? How are you going to help them with the thing that keeps them up at night? And ultimately your offer should be able to answer that question. And when I think about offers, I think about me as the guide and the client or the prospective client 
as the person who I am ushering along on this journey. And whenever anybody says yes to buying a product or service, there's generally some sort of transformation that needs to happen. And you, right, you're the guy, you're the person who's gonna help them on that transformation. And then they're the person who actually has to go through that transformation and put in the work so they can come out on the other side. Now, I think it's really important to include urgency around that because look, you can keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results, but that's the definition of insanity. And so that's why your offer needs to include a sense of urgency. So that's the first and foremost thing. The second thing that you need to do when you are making offers is you have to post it multiple times, okay? You can't just email out an offer one time and expect to get you know, hundreds of sales from that. You have to post about it on social media. You have to post about it in groups. You have to like say it over and over and over again. On average, someone needs to see an offer eight times in order to actually take action. And so send it multiple times. Don't be afraid to be sending it too many times, okay? Um, again, eight touches is the average for people to take action. And yes, people are spending more time online, so that, that amount of touch time might be shorter, but it's that continual touch and building of trust that is going to convert people from just browsing and stalking your stuff online to an actual paying client. I also highly encourage you to include social proof and testimonials and anything that you can use to showcase like, hey, I know exactly what I'm talking about. So if you've worked with a client and you've gotten amazing feedback, ask them for permission to take a screenshot and put that into your marketing. Social proof is critical when it comes to creating conversions. The other thing, if you're selling a higher end product or you're selling a one-off you know, consultation, jump on a call with people, right? Like we are literally all trapped at home. So take the time to actually create a connection with people. And when you can see them, you can actually like read their body language and you can get the tone and the inflection and actually develop a relationship with somebody that is a two way street versus just somebody reading something online. So jump on a call. And then of course, this seems super obvious, but I feel like oftentimes people just make it really challenging. Make it super simple for them to buy from you, okay? Don't make people jump through a whole bunch of hoops to buy, okay? Make it super simple and super straightforward for people to either whip out their credit card and buy from you or to purchase from you over the phone or however it is that they're buying from you, make it super easy for people to buy. The third essential element for growing your business in today's climate is getting visible, okay? So getting visible via media, getting visible via workshops, Facebook Lives, interviews, summits, speaking engagements, virtual events. So I like to call this a dream 100 strategy. Uh, Russell Brunson has a ton of information on this, but essentially the dream 100 from my perspective is a strategy that you can use to create relationships with people who have your ideal client hanging out in their audience. So for example, I would wanna go on other podcasts where their listeners are my ideal clients. So say yes to guest opportunities, say yes to um, doing free workshops, say yes to the appropriate you know, guest blogging opportunities and writing opportunities. So I also want you to start to be thinking about like media opportunities, okay? So, and there's lots and lots and lots of them out there right now. And like I said, sourcebottle, sourcebottle.com and help a reporter out, also known as Harrow. So if you Google those two things, you can put yourself on the list as a source and every day you can pick which categories that you wanna receive and you'll get a query of anywhere between, you know, three and 20 journalists looking for quotes for their articles. Now, I will say there is a quick turnaround time, okay? You do generally have to respond same day or next day, but this is a great way for you to get free PR and media exposure 
during this time, okay? So, so, so important and really, really easy. It just takes some time, okay? And that's a great way to add on to that dream 100 strategy, right? So that's one way that you can get visible. Another way you can get visible is look for podcast interview opportunities, whether that's going through iTunes or Google Play and looking up all the different podcasts and reaching out to them or just posting, hey, I'm looking to be interviewed on this type of podcast. Like that's another great way in which to get in front of a larger audience because the more that you are in front of people, the more exposure you have, the more exposure you have, the more you'll be able to grow your business. Another one, of course, like I mentioned, is guest writing opportunities. There are so many opportunities right now to guest write because we are all working virtually, right? And everyone's trying to figure out how to do this and what to do and looking for people to share their expertise. So I highly recommend that. And then the fourth and final way that I recommend to get visible is to participate in groups and summits and virtual conferences, okay? So many people are doing these things right now and you could host one yourself, could be really simple, just make a pop-up Facebook group and have a summit or you can try and get yourself listed on other ones, but this is a great way to A, serve your community, B, show value, deliver trust, and really increase that exposure. Essential element number four, focus, okay? <laughs> if you're an online business owner, a regular business owner, an entrepreneur, somebody's got a side hustle, you're probably pretty creative like me, okay? And there are so many different glittery object syndromes that <laughs> we can get distracted by. And it's really easy during this time frame to just kind of go down a Facebook rabbit hole, okay? I'm guilty of it, I'm sure you're guilty of it. And it's really, really important to stay focused and set a concrete goal with milestones along the way. And you wanna to work towards that goal on a daily basis. Like, what what is the one thing you can do each and every day just to move that goal even if it's just like a tiny little baby step forward and it's so 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 important the other thing i really want you to think about is focus on showing up on one or two platforms i see this mistake all of the time people will get online and they're like i have to do facebook and instagram and this and that and the other and they're like completely overwhelmed by trying to do that i do not ever recommend for any of my clients to take on more than two social media platforms or two marketing platforms at any one time. And the reason why I say this is because I'd rather have you dominate and completely crush one or two than do three or four or five or six, okay? And so focus on one or two platforms and do them exceptionally well. Show up consistently, deliver value ex consistently, engage, answer questions, just like crush it, okay? <laughs> Stay really, really focused on just being as there for those people in that community as you can, rather than spreading yourself super duper thin. The other thing that I want you to think about is focus on promoting one or two offers, right? So an entry level offer and then a signature offer. I think a lot of times people, they get into the online world, right? Because many of you are coming into the online world for the for the first time, or maybe you're just new in general. And they just try and like do seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 different offers just to see what sticks. Yes, that might work. However, a better strategy is to focus on one or two offers and continue to tweak and hone those offers until you sell them. Okay, the fifth and final element that I think is essential to growing your business in this time frame is minding your mindset, okay? You cannot show up for your community or your people or your clients or your family or for yourself if you haven't prioritized taking care of yourself first. And as I mentioned earlier, it's really easy to go down the social media rabbit hole <laughs> um, and get sucked in and reading article after article and negative thing after negative thing. And I, I don't want you feeling overwhelmed or exhausted or tired or being pulled in a million directions. I want you to be really mindful of your mindset. So what does being really mindful of your mindset look like? First and foremost, it's practicing self-care, getting time to yourself. Yes, I'm a mom of two, so if you have kids at home, I know it's challenging. We're homeschooling, we're working, we're like managing the house, cooking three meals a day. And if you're home by yourself, great, but still practice self-care. So 
So I'm meditating, I'm journaling, I'm reading, I'm making sure I work out every day, I'm trying to do more yoga, I'm drinking plenty of water. And so I'm making sure I'm taking care of myself so that I can show up as the best version of myself for events like this, okay? I'm also being hyper conscious of my social media consumption, right? I'm being really mindful of the content that I am allowing into my world. I'm being really conscious of who I am following and what I'm reading and where I'm getting my news from. And I know that might sound a little silly or strange, but I truly recommend that you get facts, <laughs> you go to a reputable news source, so that way you're you're realizing what it is that you're consuming. You're not just like kind of mindlessly sitting there scrolling, because I know we can all be guilty of that. I know I've done it, and then I get into this spiral of overwhelm, and I just can't show up for anybody, and that is not where your mindset needs to be if you're gonna grow your business during this time. The other thing, especially for people who are new from working from home, is to set boundaries around work and personal time. Many people are working from home for the first time, and I've never worked in corporate America, and for me, I had probably a solid 10 years out of my 17 years in business where just work bled into personal time and there were no boundaries and I just worked whenever I would get up, I'd open my laptop and I basically work until I went to bed. And so it becomes really easy to let those two bleed together. So set boundaries around work and personal time when you're starting work, when you're finishing work um, and just really like how you're managing your day. Because when you work from home, it is really easy to just slide down that slippery slope of working all the time. Uh, the next thing to mind your mindset is to time block. So because we are working from home and because we do have so much time in our day and we're not necessarily like running around, dropping kids off or doing all those other things, um, we can have a task that would normally take 30 minutes, take an hour or two or three hours. And so I always say work expands to time allowed. And so what I want you to do is I want you to be sure that you block time to do things. So if you have to write an email for your list, give yourself 30 minutes to do so. If you're gonna go through and you're gonna post on social media or you're gonna consume social media content, give yourself you know, 30 minutes to do so. The most important thing when minding your mindset is be gentle with yourself, like have grace. We are all experiencing a roller coaster of emotions and that can often bring out the best in people and the worst in people. And I truly believe that for me, I am just trying to give myself lots of wide open spaces to make mistakes, okay? And I'm trying to give myself lots of grace around getting things done and making sure things are moving forward. So I'm just being super gentle with myself. And so I encourage you to do the same thing because it is a really challenging time that we are living in and it's hard, okay? <laughs> Let's be honest about it, right? Like this is hard, it's challenging and you know, if we can all just give ourselves a little grace and if you're having a hard day, give yourself permission to take a break from work, give yourself permission to walk away for a little bit um, and give yourself that grace you need to keep moving forward. I know for me, um, if I've been super duper tired, I've just been letting myself be like, all right, taking a midday nap. <laughs> and that's not something I've ever done, okay? And so just, like I said, be gentle with yourself. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this is beneficial to you guys. And again, feel free to um, shoot me a message, join me on Facebook, and we'll talk to you all soon. Thank you and have a fantastic day.